Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome to my new Let's Play. We're going to be playing a little game called Super Mario 3D World. Uh, this game originally came out for the Nintendo Wii U back in 2013. And uh, very recently this game actually uh, came out again for the Nintendo Switch under the title uh, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Um, I am playing the Switch version of the game, and I will be checking out the Bowser's Fury mode uh, later on after I finish the main game. Um, but yeah, this is essentially going to be my Let's Play of 3D World. And uh, 3D World is essentially, I, I like to see it as kind of the sequel to Super Mario 3D Land, which was on the 3DS and came out, uh, I think, one or two years prior. And um, it was a pretty solid game. Um, you know, there was definitely a bit on the easy side, but uh, it was still a very enjoyable game, and I had a lot of fun with it. And uh, I was really excited to play this game because, uh, you know, it was a console version of basically that same style. Um, not only did it have, like, new power-ups, new enemies, new worlds, um, but it also had uh, the availability of a couple of new characters you could play as as well. Um, because in 3D Land, you had Mario, and you unlocked Luigi later on in the game. Uh, this game kind of borrows from Super Mario Bros. 2 the concept of playing as basically four characters. So um, the entire cast from Super Mario Bros. 2 is here, Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach. And uh, it's a pretty fun adventure game. I honestly really, really enjoy this game. Uh, it was a lot of fun the first time I played it. And um, it's honestly really cool to play this game multiplayer as well. Um, you can also even play it online on the Switch version, which is pretty awesome. Um, assuming you can handle the lag anyway. And, uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool game. I'm looking forward to finally playing it for you guys. So, without further ado, let's actually go ahead and get this started. I'm gonna start a new game. Um, gonna pick a character. We're just gonna pick Mario to start. You know, why not? He is the leader of the bunch. You know him well. He's finally back to kick some Koopa Tail, I guess you could say. So this is the opening of the game. Let's go ahead and see what's going on here. We got uh, we got the full cast here. They also seem to be using the blue toad as uh, opposed to just like the normal toad design, which I honestly don't have a problem with that. I think it kind of works because uh, this way each of the characters has their own kind of color scheme here. Red, green, pink, and blue. And whoa, we found this magical pipe where lots of very awesome power-ups pop out. As well as this little fairy girl. Uh, these are the Sprixies, which are basically their own race of fairy, who seems to be having some trouble with a all-too-familiar foe of ours, King Bowser of the Koopa Troopas. So we're going to have to... Uh-oh, there he is. He's back. He seems to want these fairies, and... Uh, well, we're not we're not kidnapping Peach for once, or he's not kidnapping Peach for once, which is, you know, it's at least something new, I guess. So, you know, it's a little different from the formula, and you know, Peach is actually doing something for once, as opposed to just getting captured like she always does. So, you know what? I'm down for that. I'm definitely down for that. It's a kidnapping plot again, but at least it has a little bit of a twist um, available for us. So here we are, we are getting thrown to the first world of the game. As you can see, um, the world maps are kind of uh, free traveling. You can kind of walk around the world map as the character you're playing as. Um, you can move around, you can press the B button to jump. Um, you can also play with a couple of different control schemes as well, this being on the Nintendo Switch. I'm obviously using the Pro Controller because uh, I use the Pro Controller for pretty much everything. I just really can't stand using the uh, Joy-Cons, if I'm being honest. Even if I have them connected as a controller, it's still just not really my preferred uh, style of controlling uh, video games. So, sticking with the Pro Controller, even though my Pro Controller has been heavily used, especially this past year. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and go straight into this level here. This is the first level of the game. And this is Super Bell Hill. Uh, I love this song. Honestly, the mu the music for this game is pretty catchy, not gonna lie. Uh, this song especially, I've definitely... Uh, uh, th there have definitely been some songs created uh, with uh, made lyrics, uh, which uh, 
uh, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll sing that for you guys a bit later. Um, so yeah, um, basically controls pretty similar to 3D Land. You move around. You can press the A or B button to jump. Um, you can hold the Y button to dash. And uh, obviously, with you combine that with jumps, you can go a little bit further. Um, X can also do the same thing as well. Um, you can press the uh, R, um, the ZR button to crouch. Uh, and if you press the uh, Y button when you are crouched, you do a bit of a little dash attack here. Um, if you press just the normal R button, you'll see this little icon up here. Um, you control this icon with the uh, gyro controls of the Switch. Um, this will come into play later on. Um, I'm not super crazy about uh, that little uh, selector cursor thing, uh, just because um, it, it was a lot better in the uh, uh, Wii U version. I know, surprise, Wii U is actually better for something. But um, <laughs> with the Wii U version, um, you actually used the gamepad, which I think made that a lot more simple to control and everything. Uh, and as far as other controls, um, you, you can uh, hold the... Uh, ZL button and then jump to do a long jump. Uh, seems like the L button is more of a camera thing. And you use the other stick to control the camera. Um, select button, once we get items, we'll control like uh, item inventories. And the start button will obviously, or the plus button will be uh, kind of the uh, just start, normal start button, I guess. And when I said select, I meant the minus button, so sorry if I didn't make that clear. Uh, so we're actually using one of the uh, new power-ups of this game. We are using the Super Bell, which uh, basically made us a cat form. So we are now Cat Mario. So Cat Mario is pretty cool. Um, if you jump, then press the attack button, or the Y button, or X button, you can do a bit of a kind of a dive attack, which is, can be really effective. Not just for hurting enemies, but also for recovery as well, if you're like... You know, trying to make a very long jump from the air, you can use this to kind of basically land safely on the ground. And the cat suit can also climb up walls as well, which is really, really handy. Um, you're going to be needing to do that a lot to find secrets and power-ups and uh, some of the other game collectibles. So definitely, definitely try to keep a cat suit on you at all times because there's just a lot of stuff you'll be able to get with the cat suit. Um, so here's one of our collectibles. Uh, we have the green stars. That's right, the green stars from Galaxy 2 are back in the form of kind of the star coin collectibles in this game. Uh, so there are going to be three, at least in most levels, there's going to be three uh, uh, green stars that you can collect. But that's not the only thing we'll be collecting. There is actually another collectible we'll need to get as well, but uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Get rid of some of these Goombas. Uh, be careful, because enemies, I think, can go through these clear pipes. So be very careful with that, because sometimes they can catch you off guard and uh, basically hurt your face, and you don't want that. Okay, so there's the checkpoint. If you die, you'll obviously go back there. Here you have a binocular Sprixie, which will basically kind of show you the path ahead. So we need to ultimately get all the way down there to the goal. Uh, here we have a rabbit. Uh, has a nice green glow to this rabbit, which basically signifies they have a green star for us. So we're going to grab that. Here's another uh, super bell that you can use. Uh, if, obviously, we already have one, and we have one in storage, too. So not that necessary, but still. Oh, Mega Mushroom. I'm definitely going to want to get that. Um, let's do some other stuff, too. So yeah, the Mega Mushroom is here. With the Mega Mushroom, we can basically destroy everything. <laughs> Look at Mario destroy everything. He is a monster. Ooh. Okay, he's not... No! <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised there were no rails there, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Uh, so one thing that's kind of nice is, um, as far as the Green Star collectibles, if you die after collecting one, uh, they will actually uh, remain collected, so that's actually kind of nice. Um, the only stipulation, though, is if you get a game over, you will have to collect them again, so keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not going to get the Mega Mushroom again this time, though. <laughs> the, you didn't need the Mega Mushroom for anything, though. It's just literally for getting more points, I guess, or finding some other hidden secrets. Uh, so in here we actually have another one of the stage collectibles. We have a stamp. 
Um, I'll talk about the stamps when we get to the end of the level once we actually see what the stamp is. Uh, but basically in all the normal levels you'll find one stamp, so be on the lookout for those, in addition to the green stars. Um, so for the last green star, we actually want to go down here, I believe. I was mistaken, but there was a 1-up at the very least. Let's, uh, let's at least be happy for that. I'm really mad that I took a death right there. Of all the ways for me to take a death, that was the way I had to go. Okay, so I might actually will need that Mega Mushroom, so let me go back and get that really quick. Okay, come here, you big rabbit. You wascally big rabbit. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I almost did it again. <laughs> oh, man. I think we just, yeah, we just fall down here. Okay, I think, th yeah, this is where the other green star was. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now, unfortunately, when you get a Mega Mushroom, you lose your cat suit, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, so once again, much like in Super Mario 3D World, uh, there is actually another kind of kind of collectible. It's a theoretical collectible where you want to try to get to the top of the flagpole on every level. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is I'm actually gonna press the. Uh, oh, it's actually not the select button, the or the minus button. You use the D-pad up on the D-pad uh, to use uh, your um, basically your extra item inventory. And the reason why I became a cat again is because right here. Um, you want to try to get these flagpoles with the cat form because um, basically if you miss the top of the flagpole, um, the cat will actually climb up the rest of the way if you didn't quite make it. So that's kind of a good thing you can use to kind of verify that you can get the top of the flag with um, basically any character. So cat suit, very, very important in that regard too. Uh, so there we go. We uh, beat the level. We got the stamp. We have a nice uh, cat Mario stamp. So here's the thing with the stamps. Uh, when this game initially came out on the Wii U, uh, the stamps were actually used for Miiverse, which was kind of an online uh, message board thing that Nintendo made for the Nintendo Wii U, and also the 3DS at that time as well. Um, the Miiverse service no longer exists, which is a shame because uh, Miiverse was really awesome, and you could basically use those stamps to decorate your posts and stuff, but... Unfortunately, since uh, Miiverse doesn't exist anymore, that's kind of uh, not something you can do. Um, I believe you can use the stamps in this game for kind of a snapshot mode, which uh, I'm not really sure how or where you access that, but uh, they, they do have a use in this game. It's not like a major use, but you know they, they can at least be used for something, so I at least appreciate that at the very least. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move to this next level. Uh, I did play as Mario for this first level, but this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of this playthrough. Um, this game has a randomizer feature, which basically means whenever you start a level, you can randomize what character you can be. So, to kind of challenge myself, I guess, I'm basically going to randomize who I use for every single level. So, yeah, let's do that. I think that's a kind of a great way to spice this up, so... We're going to press the random button, and we're going to be using Luigi for this one. Okay, well, I guess that's appropriate. We used Mario, now we're going to use Luigi, so I guess that's only fair. So, sounds good to me. Uh, and all the characters do kind of control differently, if that wasn't obvious. Uh, Mario is a pretty well-balanced character. You know, he has pretty balanced stats all across the board. Uh, Luigi, um, he does seem to go faster, but he definitely has some traction issues. He also jumps... A lot higher as well. He even has his like little Luigi little uh, foot kick, which kind of gives him like a little extra time in the air. But again, he kind of sacrifices uh, that slipperiness with uh, just kind of more control and stability. So it can be a little harder to use Luigi compared to Mario, but uh, you know, Luigi's definitely not a bad character to use as well. So you know, definitely if you like using Luigi. Um, Definitely use Luigi. I don't see anything wrong with that, personally. So we're going to go ahead and grab a Fire Flower, because... Yeah, why not? It seems like a thing to do. going to do this really quick to get some coins. There's actually a good place where you can get uh, one-ups in this level, where... Um, it basically, if you uh, basically put a shell in a very enclosed space, and you can actually... Uh, jump on that shell multiple times, you can actually 
Just get a whole bunch of one-ups in that form, which may not be a bad thing to do if you can figure that out. Just so you don't have to worry about, you know, getting game overs or anything like that. I know, it's it's it's, it's hard to really even take game overs seriously anymore just because I feel like, you know, they're just not as punishing as they used to be, for example, but still, it's a... Basically right here, this is where you can just get a whole bunch of one-ups if you, uh, you know, do something like this. It, it will be a bit time-consuming, so you probably don't want to do this for, like, too long, but, you know, I'll stick here for a little bit. So we have a nice little, uh, cache of lives, at least kind of starting out here. Maybe I'll go to 100. You know what, let's go to 64. We'll go with that. I love 64, it's my favorite number after all, so that seems like a good place to stop. Uh, so yeah, whenever you see the clear pipes and you uh, see like... Uh, also yeah, you can you can shoot fireballs through clear pipes, which is kind of cool. But um, whenever you see uh, clear pipes that have like multiple paths, basically you just hold the dir direction of the path when you're uh, moving in that form, so... Keep that in mind. Let's see, ooh, one up, I'll take that. I know we already lost 64 lives, but still I think we're doing pretty well for ourselves regardless. Okay, so we got a green star here. We have death right there. I don't know why I ground pounded there. I guess I didn't really talk about the ground pound. I mean it's just basically using ZL when you're in the air. I talked about the little charge move like uh, this, but I didn't talk about the actual ground pound, which is basically the same thing. We'll just say the reason I did that is because I didn't want to be at 65 lives. I wanted to be back at 64. Clearly that was the reason why I died right there. But see, again, it is nice that we you know, don't have to collect the, star, uh, the green star again. Not that the green star was really that hard to get. It was pretty much like in... like the vicinity, so it's not a big deal. Uh, so we're going to go up and above this area. Um, I don't know if I want to go this far yet, but eh, we'll, we'll do this. I'm trying to be a little careful, because again, that slipperiness with Luigi is definitely being a little bit of a annoyance. Not a major one, mind you, but still, it's something you got to look out for. Come on. <laughs> there we go. So here we have a puzzle box. In these puzzle boxes, you gotta defeat the enemies. Or at least in this one, you have to defeat the enemies. And once you do all that, you uh, basically grab the star, and then you get tossed out. You probably don't want to lose your power up when you're doing that, though. That's something that I did just kind of unintentionally. But still, I think that kind of goes without saying. Damn it, I tried to... Jeez, Luigi is seriously so slippery. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna go up here now. And we're gonna see what's in here. I believe this is just a gold pipe. Whenever you find a gold pipe like this, it usually signifies it's gonna be a coin haven of sorts, so... We're gonna just throw these around. some extra coins for our trouble, and that's basically it. Nothing of major significance there, but still, you can find some nice little goodies if you're persistent enough. See, so yeah, like, right here, like, yeah, if you see, like, a alternate path in these pipes, just point the control stick in the other way, and you can maybe get some extra goodies. Uh, so I believe up here, um... Oh, there's the stamp, so we got that. But, like, somewhere around here... Oh, yeah! That felt good. Um, I believe, like, kind of up and above this section right here, you can actually uh, find a hidden warp zone, which uh, I'm not going to show those right now. Um, basically, for warp zones, what I think I'm going to do is... Uh, once I get to the world where those warp zones actually lead, I'll uh, use them then. I think that's kind of a fair way to do it. Um, but yeah, basically right here, you can see there is like a ceiling up here. 
Um, you need the cat suit in order to get up here, though. That's the only thing, so we can't do that right now. But still, it's uh, it's something we can uh, come back for at a later date and time. Okay, so unfortunately right here, we don't have a cat suit, and we're also not using another character, which can also make getting the flagpole pretty easily. Uh, Luigi's not too bad because he does jump high, but you have to keep in mind he does have like some slight momentum issues. But that one's easy enough since we're not we have like all the time in the world to make the jump count. So we beat the level with Luigi, we got the top of the flagpole, we got all the other wonderful collectibles in here, and that means we can uh, continue on with our lovely coin stamp. <laughs> oh boy, the coin stamp. Literally the most important stamp in the game. <clears throat> so what do we got here? We got, uh... Well, we got a charging chuck. And we also have a mushroom house. Let's go ahead and go to the mushroom house really quick. This, I believe, is a small game of chance. Pick a box. Its contents will help you on your way. Way to quote Mario Bros. 3, Toad. Uh, so basically, you choose one of these, depending on which one you pick, you'll get some items. Um, even though it seems like you'd get more from this, this will not always be the case. It is random and luck-based, kind of like the mini mega uh, spaces in Mario Party 4. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this, and eh, that's not too bad. I'm going to do this. I'm going to use this really quick, and then grab this, just so I have like an extra. I'm going to jump on Toad for a little bit, because fun... <clears throat> and we're going to leave. <laughs> and I might actually switch back to the Fire Flower, at least for this next, like, mini-boss fight, too. But honestly, even the Cat Suit is, like, pretty good for combat, too, since you can kind of swipe right in front of you as well. So let's go ahead and fight this uh, little mini-boss here. Charging Chucks. I was, I was pretty excited when I saw this, when I first played this game. It's like... Wow, it's an enemy from my one of my my favorite all-time video game and Mario game to boot. So it's like it's cool they actually still remember some of these classic Mario enemies because you know Mario's got a lot of history, so it's fun to take a look at uh, take a look at that history. So yeah, even though we cleared that with Luigi. Um, that's not really a case where, uh, I, I guess I should probably also mention that. Um, as far as what I'm doing for, like, completion of this game, um, getting 100% in this game is a pretty tedious feat because, uh, you see those, sta uh, basically you see how these, uh, flagpoles have, like, all the, like, character emblems on them, which is honestly pretty cool. Um, if you want to actually get everything in the game, though, you need to actually beat every single level with every single character. And, uh, let's just say, the four characters we have now, they may not be the only characters. So, you have to at least be every level in this game five times. Or, yeah, so... That's a lot of playthroughs. I am not going to be doing that for this playthrough. Um, I might try to do it in my spare time just to show you guys the rewards and all of that stuff, but I am not doing that for this playthrough, so do not worry. Um, but yeah, I'm essentially going to do the character randomization thing. And as far as the levels that you need to beat with every character, like levels like this, you don't have to worry about. It's mainly the levels that have flagpoles, so you can only, like, only focus on those when it comes to uh, character clearing. If you play a multiplayer, though, it definitely goes a lot faster since you'll get more character clears with that. But since there are, like, more than four characters, like, you won't be able to do it all in one playthrough. You will have to still do additional playthroughs anyway. Especially considering we don't even have that other character yet, so... Just keeping that in mind, just letting you guys know that ahead of time, that's, uh... Yeah, it's a pretty big feat, and it's probably one, not one I'm going to be focusing on, at least in this project, for this playthrough anyway. Uh, so I know we've been doing a lot of talking here, and we're already past the 20 minute mark. I'm just going to do this level really quick, and then probably end the video. But since I've pretty much explained a lot of different things, uh, I feel like the rest of the videos, uh, I'll be able to cover more um, content in each video. So here, we actually are using Peach. Now Peach, uh, she's not the fastest character, but what she does have is 
probably what will make her the most useful in this game in terms of getting all the flag pulls because much like in Mario 2, uh, Peach actually has the float jump which basically allows her to more than likely get the flag pull easier than any other character in the game. So, you know, as much as I hate Princess Peach, I have to give her credit. She definitely does make getting the flag pull a lot more manageable in this game. So if there is one character where, you know, if you miss the gold flag pull and if you didn't play as Peach, you can just play the level again really fast as Peach and get an easy flag pull clear so you don't have to worry about that ever again. So again, that is one thing I will give credit to Peach for. And the fact she didn't get captured in this game as well. That's also just an amazing, amazing breakthrough for her character. But, uh... I still don't like her. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm just... I'm just not a Peach fan. I'm sorry. I have tried to be nicer to her, so I know that you guys... Like, some of you guys don't like when I'm mean to Peach. And to that, I apologize. And I, I am trying to be more fair to her, but... I just don't like her as a character. Like, not only has she, she been mean to me in Mario Party games, but I also have some personal beefs with her character as well. I kind of feel like, uh, you know, there's some character qualities that she has that I'm not really that fond of. Maybe I'll talk about those at some point. Her getting captured all the time is definitely one of them, but there's also some other, some other aspects about her that I'm just not really too impressed with. I also missed a green star somewhere, um, which is weird considering that we're still at the very beginning of the level. I know what that means, this at least allows us to kind of go back and check the area a little bit. Maybe it's on top of here. Yep, okay. For some reason I didn't realize there was a second tree there. <laughs> I guess I climbed that first tree, saw the binoculars um, sprick scene, and was like, okay, that's all they're going to have right here. They wouldn't hide a super mega awesome secret or anything like that. Nope, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. I can't believe I was wrong. But yeah, levels like this, I think, really show the potential for the cat suit and, like, why it's, like, such an awesome power-up in this game. And, like, I think it's, like, a perfect, like, balance when you consider the fact that, like, obviously in the last game, 3D Land, the raccoon suit, or the Super Leaf, was, like, the most broken item because it's, like, so many of the levels were platforming levels and that just really broke the game in a lot of aspects. Here, it, it, like, this, this power-up is really good, but it's really good for a different reason. Okay, so anyway, we have another little bonus room right here where we can get some extra time and some extra points and some extra coins, maybe even one-ups. And we also get the third green star as well, and that's pretty much that, so we're going to go ahead and keep on moving. Ooh, a big piranha plant. Die. Die. Oh yeah, Duffman. <laughs> I don't know why I brought up Duffman right there, I just did. Okay, so right here, again, this is what's nice. Now here's the thing, um, obviously I don't have a, uh, there's no platforms that'll get us up there. But we have the cat suit, which will allow us to do this. Oh yeah. <clears throat> See, wait will actually look cool for once, Peach. Didn't know you had it in you. Okay, so that's going to actually do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this Super Mario 3D World playthrough. Um, we have a long way to go. This is actually a pretty big game. I feel like it's even like bigger than 3D Land when you look at like all the content that it has. Plus, we'll have Bowser's Fury on top of that. Um, but next time, we're going to be... Uh... Yes, yes, you can play online. That's cool. Uh, but next time we'll be checking out the final character that we haven't played as yet, my own personal favorite character. And uh, we'll also probably be finishing up World 1 as well, so I hope you guys enjoy uh, this project. It's going to be a lot of fun as we uh, get another chapter of the 3D Mario series out of the way. This has been Slim Kirby. I will see you guys next time. Later, folks.